I'm Jackie Fabulous, and you are watching Reggae TV, and that just happens to be where my family is from. Anything all reggae, Jackie Fabulous. I'll tell you my real name later. Jackie Fabulous is a comedian with a strong Jamaican background who uses her family as a source for some really funny stand-up. Whether speaking at a live event, headlining at a top comedy club, or on stage for America's Got Talent, Jackie Fabulous is here to make you laugh. I was born in the part of the Bronx in New York that is considered pretty much Kingston. Everyone at my part of the Bronx from the West Indies in some way, shape, or form. Like my father would cut a mango with a machete, like it was very Jamaican in my house until I left. And my parents were very good parents in that they shipped me off to Jamaica every summer. So the school closed down. They were like, guess where you're going? And I did that until I was old enough to be like, I don't want to go anymore. I want to get a job. So Jamaica is very, you know, it's a lot of love. And the love is all shown with food. Amazing. You guys think you know organic. Organic for me was, I'm hungry. My mom would say, go outside and get your lunch. Meaning there are trees in abundance everywhere, apples, Pineapples, mangoes, bananas, other fruits, I don't really understand what they have, what, how to pronounce them. But that was lunch. Like if you were hungry, you just pick it. You don't need to rinse it off. You can, but you don't need to. And you take a bite and eat it right there. And that's what I'm, I remember is, that's why my people in my, my family, I think, no one really dies until they're at least 80. But I have grandparents, great grandparents who died 100, 101, almost 105, because they their food was natural. They would go out and pick it, or they would kill the animal, literally. Whatever animal you got, you got attached to as a, as a pet, one day, they were gonna be in a pot. Yeah. <laughs> and that is as organic as you could possibly get. My grandmother used to have bunny rabbits, right? And there was one white fluffy rabbit that, the more attached I got, the more my mom would make fun of me. Cause she's like, you know, the rabbit is going to be dinner one, don't get too attached to the rabbit. And I'm like, whatever. Mom, you know, I love the rabbit. And I swear to you, one day I came home from the, the whatever, Mandeville shopping, and the rabbit's fur was hanging on the, 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 I guess, the pen. We were drying it out. And I was like, is that? And she was like, I told you not to make him your friend. <laughs> I don't come from a land of people who don't eat animals. <laughs> My mother cooked a home-cooked meal like Thanksgiving size almost every day. So I don't know what it's like to not eat heavy breakfasts and heavy dinners. So I resigned to understand I'm never going to be skinny because more food means I'm happy and taken care of. And that's what I do for a living. And if I'm not happy, guess who's not going to laugh? Anyone else. <laughs> I was doing stand up at night for fun. I was, it was a hobby. It was a hobby where the drinks were free. I was the only woman and I loved all that attention from all the guys and the shows were fun. So, and I did that for about four years where I didn't care about making money. I didn't know you could. I knew you could because I knew comics who were pros in the, in the world of, you know, the business. But I didn't know that I had the knack or had the ability to make a living from it. Because I got my sense of humor from my father. He was a dry, sarcastic, inappropriate man. That's where I got it. But, but neither him nor my mom understand where I got it from. They're in denial still. To this day, they're like, who tell you say it was funny? You know, you I never thought you was funny at all. That's my mother. She's like, you think you're funny? That is, or she would watch my stand up and think, you, you have a law degree. You are hilarious. <laughs> That's her way of saying, I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> I'm only able to find the funny in them now that I'm an adult. When you're growing up, Nothing was funny. My mother, father, and aunt, I was raised by all three of them, same house my whole life, strict. Like when the sun went down and street lights came on, I had to go inside. Like I wasn't allowed to do anything, go anywhere. I couldn't date boys openly until I was like 19. They were very strict. And back then you hated and wanted all of them to die. But when you become an adult, you're like, oh, first of all, I'm glad, because like, I'm, I'm a lady now, because they were so strict. And second of all, I'm, now I'm like, oh, out of that annoying, embarrassing stuff was actually funny. So I can re recall when I go home now, I record them behind her back. <laughs> or I talk to them on camera. I'm like, Mommy, give me your opinion. And when I play it like, on Instagram, people are like, your mother is hysterical. 
I'm like, yeah, now. <laughs> but reggae is a big part of growing up. I just know it was always on in my house. You know, always, like morning, noon, and night. My mother would wake up on a Saturday and Sunday morning, and the first thing they would do was turn on the radio in the living room, but turn it on full blast so she could cook and vacuum while we're playing in the background. And you know, my father's favorite artist was Bob Marley. So I know all the lyrics, everything Bob Marley. But I was always the dance hall girl. Like, I like the, the one you could dance nasty with. Na dance nasty too in a reggae club in the back corner somewhere under the smoke. That was the music I liked. Yeah. You know where the, most of the parties were in New York? In Brooklyn. Brooklyn has a very high, high Jamaican population. And growing up, they had a lot of reggae nightclubs. Nightclubs, yes. But in the 90s, the reggae nightclubs in Brooklyn, not for nothing, the most dangerous places you can be. Because every once in a while, a shootout would halt the party. Like you'd be dancing, getting your grind on, really feeling in touch with the roots, and then bop, 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 everybody leaves! And then the party's over. But you know, once again, that's culture. <laughs> Can I plug something? Sure. My, my website, JackieFabulous.com. You go to that website, that's... Tell, tell you. Go to JackieFabulous.com. It's spelled the way it sounds. And all of my social media is on there. And you can email me, ask me out, send me money. I'm a little bit lonely, so hit me up, please. <laughs> Finally, I'm here. <laughs> all done? Thank you. That was fun. Thank you. This is going to be my new place, Matt. <laughs> when I have breakfast, no. This is the laminated poster of me headlining the Comedy and Magic Club. Three nights at a club of this stature. Huge deal. I'm wearing new Spanx. That's how important this is. And it's me. Old hairstyle. Same smile. Yay. Aww. Thank I, you. Thank you. I want this.